Our second approach to finding the endpoint of acid-base titrations is to use indicators. Uh, so these are colored, uh, colored molecules, um, variety of colors, um, that change color depending on their protonation. So, for example, the fully deprotonated form may be orange, and the fully protonated form may be blue or something like that. Uh, so let's look at a specific example, uh, thymol blue. This is a acid-base indicator. Uh, so thymol blue has two different forms. We have a red form that exists at low pH. So this is the protonated form. But when it is deprotonated, it becomes yellow. And at higher pH, it turns blue. That's why the blue is in the name. But at the low pH, uh, we have a red and yellow form. And we can get an idea of what's going to happen in terms of colors by, by looking at what, what's the pKa of this acid. So we can look this up in a table. Um, the pKa for this particular acidic form, uh, again, there are more than one for this, uh, is equal to 1.7. And so we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to get an idea of what's going to happen in terms of how this changes with pH. So at pH equals 1.7, our concentration of the red form, the protonated form, is going to be equal to, roughly equal to the concentration of the yellow form. So in terms of the color, we'll have red plus yellow in equal amounts. This will look orange right at pH 1.7. Uh, let's go to lower pH. At pH 0 0.7, uh, this means that the concentration of red will be larger and it'll be about 10, 10 times larger than the concentration of the yellow form. So the color of the solution that we get will be just red. And if we go to pH 2.7, we'll have the opposite. The concentration of the red will be less than the concentration of the yellow and the color of our solution will be just yellow because there won't be enough of the red present to make a difference. So we can see this change going from, you know, if you're say coming from higher pH, it'll be yellow. And as you continue to add acid, it'll change to orange right at pH 1.7 and then continue on to being just red. Uh, and so it's this color change as a function of pH that we use to let us know that we've reached that point in the uh, in the titration curve where the pH is changing drastically right at the equivalence point. And that lets us keep track of the fact, right? So it, say we're doing a titration, we're at the equivalence point, it you know goes from like pH three down to pH um, one, we will see this change from yellow to red. And often we're looking for this in between, right? Where we have both forms, that's, that's what we often look for is knowing that we haven't gone past the equivalence point, that we're right at the equivalence point. Now we need to match the uh, the, the uh, indicator we use with the expected range of pH for our titration. So I'm going to switch over to PowerPoint here. Uh, this is our thymol blue, and this is actually what the, the different forms look like. So here's our pK 1.7. And the blue form is, uh, has, so the yellow has a pKa of 8.9 to lose the next proton, and it forms a blue. So you can actually use this uh, for uh, titrations at higher pHs as well. Uh, but we're going to have these combinations of these depending on the pH. And we have a whole table of them. So this is table 11-3 in your textbook. Uh, and we have a bunch of different um, uh, indicators that we can use. And it shows the transition range. So these, these are based on the pKa values. We can, it shows what the acid color is and the base color is. And you'll, at the, right at the point in the middle, you'll get a mixture of the two. So like bromocresol green, which we use in, in the lab, um, right, the green color is where you have both the yellow and blue that are present. If you go too far, you'll have just blue. If you don't go far enough, you'll have just yellow. Uh, and so we have a whole range and you wanna pick 
for a given titration, something where the transition range here matches with the, the expected trend, you know, change in pH for your equivalence point. If you're titrating a weak acid, your pH at the, um, at the equivalence point is gonna be a slightly basic pH, so you probably wanna pick something sort of in this range here. Whereas if you're titrating a weak base, you'll end up with something with acidic pH at the equivalence point because all of your weak bases turn into weak acid. Um, so this is something you can look at with, with you know, uh, calculating titration curves and getting a sense of which of these um, indicators you want to use for a particular titration.